It's a little bit windy here today, so I'm sure this camera is going to pick up lots of wind noise, but I'll do my best. Now, I've been doing a little bit of work on the rear sight here. Now, what I've basically done, you can see there's your original one. Um, I purchased a Lee Enfield sight off of eBay. I think it cost me about £20, including the postage. Now, it's not identical, but it's close enough. Now, um, it's not completely finished. What I've basically done is I had to put a, an M4 tap through the rear end of here to make it work in the same way as this one does. You see, there's basically a thread running in a hole going through the rear of the sight, and when you, would, when you turn that, it moves the sight left and right. Now underneath there there's a spring and uh, as you just noticed you can raise this up so that you've got the um, so you can look through the sight through the oh, I can't think uh, uh, I can't think what they call that that, that type of sight now uh, tip of my tongue can't think of it Anyway, um, so you can raise the sight up like that and you can change the elevation on the original in that way with this wheel on the top, nailed wheel. Now, you can do exactly the same on this one. It's just a slightly different design. I think the Lyman sights, but what I've done under here is I've just I managed to find some spring steel and uh, I've mounted the spring steel down with a screw here so that um, basically it's pushing up on the bottom of that it's not quite as precise as the um, original one but it, it does the job when it clips down it holds quite securely and that's probably going to be the position it's going to be used in mostly on an airsoft one because it doesn't have the range to be requiring the sight elevated high now, um, this little nailed wheel on the side, it's actually aluminium and I, had, I found, found that in a, in a drawer. It was a bit longer and I've sawn it down to size to make it look reasonable. Um, now what I'm going to do over this side here is I'm probably going to just put a washer on there and then I'm going to solder the, uh, the washer on so that it, it's captive and doesn't come out so basically you can see that winds left and right like the proper one does the only difference is it doesn't have that little click which the uh, the original one has it's got a, a ball a sprung load spring loaded ball somewhere in there uh, actually it's not that much different um, yeah, so the thing works. It just needs a washer soldered on over there to hold that over so it doesn't keep trying to creep across. Now, so that's that done. Um, right, dimensions on this. Now, that's gone slightly wider, but my gun is slightly wider. The original one should be 35 millimeters wide across there. And these sides come up. 15 millimeters. If I uh, take a measurement there, 15 millimeters. Now there are also six, sorry, 6.4. You can call it 6.5 centimeters in length. Um. Now, this piece here is actually 0.9 of a centimetre, 9 millimetres back, and I've done the same there. That basically allows you to get your finger over at the wheel and adjust that wheel there. As to why you'd want to adjust the wheel while it's lying down, I don't know. There's not doesn't seem much point in it. Um, let's have a think. Does the elevation change in there with that wheel? And 
over there. I don't think it does. No. Anyway, that's that talked about. So you can do that. Right, next part I'm doing is the flood site. Now, the piece of tubing, which is the bottom of that site, right, let's do this in metric. Right, this works, this, this works better. Right, that's 22 millimetres in length there. Then, you've got the height of this unit, which is 18 millimetres high, the actual front side. Then you've got the top section there, which is 16 millimetres across. And the width of the metal is actually uh, 13, sorry, 12 millimetres. That's actually 12 millimetres that way. So what I've had to do, because I haven't got a big block of steel like that, I've uh, got some um, six millimeter thick flat bar and I've angled the sides um, on the two sides and I've cut the profile out so it's 22 at the bottom 16 on the top and I've made two of these so by placing them together hard to do with my thing one on hand. By placing them to t together like that, I'm going to weld them on the two sides and make it into one block and that will duplicate this site. Then what I'm going to try and do is file this little left and right adjustment slot into it. You see they're narrow at the top and then they're wedged, they go wider like a dovetail so like a dovetail site fitting to give you side elevate uh, side adjustment, windage adjustment. So I'm going to get on with that. Um, now the piece of piping that I've uh, cut to make my bottom tube was a, a piece of uh, one inch piping, and I've just cut the part of the side out of it and closed it up so that it's the right diameter. Then I'm going to weld this top part of the site over the top of the slot so it hides it. Then to mount it on the actual barrel I'm going to cut a, I'm going to grind or cut a slot in the bottom of this and weld, weld it through to the underneath of the barrel once I've got it all in alignment. To be honest I may just put a temporary weld on there and then when the gun is finished and I'm able to start trying to sight it then I might weld it up properly. Okay so I welded the two sides together and then I've uh, filed them down a bit, placed them on the collar, the piece of round pipe and I've welded the sides. Now I'm going to grind off and file those back smooth. Now um, once I've done that then I'm going to finish it off make it look a bit more like the original one. The height's going to have to be dropped a little bit more because when I welded it I left a bit of a gap between the pipe and the block which I've put on the actual site component I've put on. So uh, we'll see how that looks when I've done a bit more work. Right, so what I've decided to do for now is I've just cut a slot across the base of here and uh, basically when I fit this on permanently I'm going to weld that up, but until I've got the gun firing, I'm, I'm leaving it like that. I've blued it, and I've left it slightly taller 
done the original one and it should be 18 millimeters um, I think from the top edge of the barrel to the top of that there to the top of this part but I've left this at about 20 millimeters so it's a little bit taller if you compare it there with the original gun then as I say I've got to fit that sight in there so I'll get the gun firing first and then I'll work out what I've got to do with the sights because I might I might need them slightly taller because if you look at my sight the actual um, aperture the hole that you sight through is higher than the one on the original gun the one on the original gun is just a notch sight so there might be a difference there I've got to consider Yeah, so what have I got to do next? Oh, yeah, I've got to do this sling as well. So I'll see what I can do with that. Uh, while I've got the two of these here next to each other, you notice I've done the rear of the trigger guard. I built that out there basically just put another piece of uh, mild steel the same thickness three millimeter thick and folded that around there and then welded it and I've just taken the welder and I've filled it in with the welder there and then ground it back the other point I've done is this here you can see I've, uh, I've tried to duplicate that um, it's not perfect but it'll, it'll do for me then I've shaped the stock in curved it and left that little arch there so that the wood fits up to, to the metal I've also put some uh, finish on the on the wood on the stock it's not uh, it's not perfect but uh, it looks okay. Okay, I'm uh, a little bit more happy with this uh, one I've just made. Uh, far neater than the previous one. As uh, as you know, the more you try a thing, the uh, the better you get at it. So let's see. That's a shade under 30, 35 millimeters on the inside. In fact, now it's just about 35 at maximum and one centimeter in the gap. So that's the way the one on the uh, on the buttstock should look. So when I uh, well at some point I'm probably going to have another go and make a second one of these but this one will do for the point up at the top of the barrel so once I've got the sling on it, um, it looks quite good now that screw is possibly a little bit too long but I did think about putting a nut on one side as a lock nut to stop it coming loose but I don't think I'm going to need it uh, it does uh, it does still swivel it's a little tight but that's, that's fine uh, yeah quite happy with those uh, those swivels really. <laughs>